Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This week we are discussing episode two of Stephen Universe Future, otherwise known as Guidance. Um, I mean, I, just, I think probably uh, slight spoilers for you, Chris, I guess, in the sense that you've, you've not seen the other two, but probably the funniest, I think, of the four episodes. Yeah, I uh, thought it was really funny. It's, re- it's really weird, isn't it? Because, like, you, we started to record then, and I was like, oh, yeah, cool, I really enjoyed this episode. And then I kind of went, I don't have too much to say on it. <laughs> like, I'm no. sure. I'm sure we'll stretch it out, but, like, <laughs> I just really loved it. Um, yes, I thought it was very funny. Yeah, I, I yeah, well, certainly, like, Certainly the most reminiscent of the old school format of the show, you know, back in its first season, like maybe second, like, you know, and it was doing those like random because it has the confidence of a show and it's, you know, there's multiple seasons in. It doesn't have that sort of weird chaotic vibe of a, of a, of a show that's not found its feet yet. So it was like it's it's so it's not an early season one episode. It's like either late season one or early season two style episode of the show, you know, when it really yeah. kind of when it knew what already already what worked and what didn't um for those yeah who, i say don't remember but probably let's be honest you've all just seen it but um for those who don't, who don't remember or don't know because you've decided to listen to this first you crazy people i i, I hope that's not happening but there oh, you you're go. listening to it late yeah um well, you listening to this late yeah that's a good point um the this is the episode where uh, amethyst just set up a, a like a work program for the, the gems in little homeschool where they can find work out on the uh, you know in various places on in beach city um she's got a uh, big spite um cutting cutting pizza which we predicted on the, the previous podcast um i say predicted there's a shot of her working at the pizza place my prediction was that where she'd be useful is the big crab claw she's got. Um, that was correct. That was the slight bit of prediction that was done there. And let's be honest, that's like drawing a line from A to B. Um, anyway, um, you know, so uh, but she's also found other gems roles around Beach City. So Nephrite's flying. The uh, Larimar and Snowflake Obsidian are doing snow cones. Um, the various quartzes are helping out at... Uh, at Funland, Biggs Jasper specifically is using her, her strength to sort of force the, the the wheel round really fast on the uh, on the, yeah. on the, on the uh, what do you what do you call it like the what's the word for that uh, Ferris wheel Ferris wheel Ferris wheel is the word I was could, I'm for some reason reaching for um, but Stephen finds this a bit strange because it's a bit like cause he, the whole point was freeing them so they could do what they want and they're still doing what they were doing on Homeworld you know Nephrite's still flying. Mm. Snowflake Obsidian is still, uh, you know, using ice powers. Like he was, just, he found the that rubies are still guarding. What was I saying? The rubies are still guarding. Oh yeah, the rubies who, are, who got jobs guarding Nanofoil. So there's a little bit of an element of uh, Stephen just feels like, oh, maybe we should be getting them out of their comfort zone. So he he decides to make Amethyst's idea better. And again, we're getting little flashes of Steve maybe being overconfident here, a um, bit cocky, thinks he can fix it make it better take her idea and make it better in quote marks and what he does is um mixes all the jobs up so uh snowflake obsidian is trying to fly a plane um uh big spite who is a big giant claw hand is handing out balloons it's just the worst position for a job the rubies are handing out flowers it's just it's all wrong and destined to go wrong and it does chaos ensues steven and amethyst have to fuse in order to sort of put things right again and steven learns his lesson about not trusting amethyst and maybe that you know the, the way they frame it in the episode which i think is really clever is you know you you go on about how you know you don't that they shouldn't be told what to do anymore i talked to them and asked them what they wanted and got them in those jobs you've told them what to do um uh, and that's is that any different to what homeworld are doing so uh steven learns a lesson we all learn a lesson we laugh we cry we see smoky quartz's new design which is awesome uh and then uh, we all go home <laughs> happy and entertained that's 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 it so i mean th- th- thoughts overall other than j- th- th- that it's that it's that it's season one-esque um, they you missed out that um during Smoky Courts they get we get a bit of Hulk in Stephen. Um, is that how yes. I think? Did, did you say that? No, I didn't. You're right. Oh, I forgot. Right. I did miss that part. Yeah. You're right. Um, so we get a bit of that. Is, how are other people referring to that? <laughs> because I feel like we've just settled into referring to it that way ourselves. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't think it has an official name. Some people have called it Pink Steven. Some people have called it Hulk, like Hulking Out Steven, like Angry Steven. Like I've, I've seen lots of different descriptors used for okay, it. Okay, cool. We'll okay. stick with Hulk. I, I think we'll find Which we get that as well. Um, yep, yeah, good recap. Great. I, yeah, I just I did thoroughly enjoy it. Um, so let's... Uh, oh, and let's, ju- let's just acknowledge it now to make sure that we definitely don't forget it. In terms of it being funny... Oh, so... <laughs> They save everyone in the roller coaster before the roller coaster plunges into the ocean, <laughs> except Onion. And then at the very end, you see Onion in a roller coaster cart float to the surface. And Stephen goes, oh, We forgot Onion! Nah, he's fine. And that is one of the finest jokes the show's ever done. <laughs> it's, um, it's wonderful. <laughs> amazing. Um, so, I. I mean, to, I be, fair, to thought... be fair, like the, the whole episode, top to bottom. 20 seconds before that I got you a prize can you guess what it is <laughs> she's holding the giant stuff there behind yeah. her oh, I, oh, love, a... I love that laughter it sounds just like screaming like oh that's a that's a point for the recap as well she that particular uh, gem Larimar. kind of proves that proves that Stephen and Amethyst in some ways were both right not every gem wants to do what they did on Homeworld or an equivalent. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's about but listening you... to them. Yes. And not forcing um, them I... to do things. I thought it was funny because, I mean, Stephen is so obviously wrong. <laughs> Yes, like, that's that's clear to everyone. But that didn't that didn't jar with me. That's not a criticism because I think they they played it right, and it says a lot about where the character is. I think um, partly it, because yeah. they, they they give him a good justification for his thought process. You know he's yes, wrong, yeah. But you go, well, I see what he's getting at though, because his his ultimate point is they shouldn't be in their comfort zones. They shouldn't be doing the same stuff they were doing for the gem, for the, for the, for the, for the diamonds. You know, like, you sort of understand that point. His approach is terrible because he's just like forcing them into shit they don't want to do and are uncomfortable doing and probably going to be bad at doing. You know, uh, that, that, that's not, that's not going to help anyone's self-esteem. So the idea is clearly wrong, but it comes from a, from a very co- correct observation, if that makes sense. Uh, so you, you know so, it- so you go along with it. It's, it's, a, it's. I think the reason I enjoyed it so much was it's a, it's a perfect example of a non mythology episode in that it builds really nicely. You have some really nice action stuff with smoky courts mm-hmm. and saving the roller coaster and stuff at the end. Mm-hmm. You have a little bit of tease and mythology thrown in there with Stephen hulking out. Mm-hmm. The characters learn something that mm-hmm. is relevant to the wider story. Um, we see different characters in the townies. It's funny. It's got moments of heart and tension. You know, Amethyst and Stephen kind of confronting each other. I, it's 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 a perfect episode of this show. It's I suppose the bigger, if you want to get analytical, the bigger question is, it's the perfect episode of this show, but it's the second episode of a new show, actually, technically. Um, so, you know, that goes back to the, is this Steven Universe future or is it just season six argument? Um, which is is really semantics and who gives a shit? Uh, it's new content, well, hey. Um, so, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. Would you say it was Pearl Fact? I would say we don't need to make that a thing. Um, <laughs> but if you want to... If you want to try, then yes, it's I called it's called it synergy, Chris. It's, 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 it's crossing over from the from my from the other thing on this channel, which is me playing through Unleash the Light. Cross promotion. Yeah, I... Yep. Uh... <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I think it was perfect. I think there if we're go. gonna, if I'm gonna try and make Steven Universe the college years a thing, then uh, you're within your right to <laughs> to try and make perfect a thing. Well, I'm only doing it publicly because basically I want an excuse to plug. If you guys haven't got access to Unleash the Light because you don't have an Apple device, it's locked just to Apple devices for those who don't know. Um, you can see me playing it right now on this channel. Six parts are already up as we're recording this. Seven will be up later today. So seven, actually, by the time you hear this, at least, if not more, check it out. Yeah, It's uh, it's good. I've, I've not checked it out. Um, but I hear the feedback. I see the feedback, and the feedback is incredibly positive. So, yeah, if you have any interest in that at all, Go check out Dan and uh, watch out for the perfect puns. Uh huh. Plenty of them. Yeah. Plenty of them. I don't that. I don't need to watch it to know that. <laughs> Plenty of them. Well, every time you do an attack, it says perfect. So it really doesn't take long for me to. <laughs> Oh, when wow. when oh, Pearl, wow. well, okay, be... no, 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 that's arrogant. Every time I do an attack and I hit the button timed at the right time, it says perfect, perfect. But it does that a reasonable amount of the time. 
because you know you do several attacks per fight and therefore uh, at least one or two of them are going to be perfect uh yeah and then don't you mean perfect i do i mean perfect anyway so what, what are your feelings on this episode um i yeah i think you something crashing pretty... us back down to a little town i like to call the point <laughs> um well back in the point i would say um it's it's no i i would agree with everything you've just said i yeah. i but i the only the only addition i would make to your to what you just said is that it's a perfect early episode of a perfect. show perfect sorry <laughs> Now you're making it a thing. Um, I was happy to leave it at what we'd done. Um, and the reason I say that is because the reason I want to add that little caveat is that the show will need to become more than this ultimately to be satisfying. This is perfect for this moment, for where we're at now. Early in the season, still establishing some stuff. We want to, you, you want to meet these new gems a bit more, get to know them. You also want to have... Like all the things you want from the show right now, this episode serves up. But if you put, if you do this episode again, and I don't mean literally this episode, but all the stuff this episode gives you towards the end of this, the whole series is going to feel a bit frivolous. And I don't think that's what they're doing, and I don't think that's the intention. It's perfect for what we need right now, which is we needed to spend some more time in the town, but like have a nice, light, fun episode evoke some of the sillier humour of the early seasons, but hint at the bigger, wider plot, and also let us meet these new gems. Like, it had a handful of things it wanted to do, and it achieved them absolutely sort of on point, every single one of them. Like, it was exactly the right amount of all of those things. Like, this recipe was very balanced, um, and it did lead to a very good episode of the show. But, again, the caveat being, if they're still doing this at the very end, and this show never evolves beyond just these sort of silly, frivolous this is where they are now moments. I don't know if this show will, will feel as satisfying as I'm, I'm hoping. I don't, I don't know if it needs to evolve to less silly, this is where we are now moments. It just needs to evolve to stuff that I would like to see plots that depend on you knowing Steven Universe future, not knowing Steven Universe. And I know that's hard to do. I know it's a sequel. And I know that... Well, it's an know, epilogue. They not... described it as an epilogue. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm being a bit. Yeah, I'm being a bit of a. But, I, well, I, 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 I just, actually, I just, actually, want... I don't want that either. <laughs> so forget I, that but, point. Here's, but here's the thing: is I, I don't want the show to necessarily build to another change your mind less climactic finale. Uh, don't misunderstand me, listeners. Please, I, what I'm suggesting is that the show needs to evolve to bigger character stuff and deal with some of the bigger fallout of the show's history. And 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 get the characters by to... the end, not at this point, but by the end. Yes, correct. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So this episode is incredible, and is and as you said, is perfect for what it's doing right now. But perfect. by the end, perfect. By the end, it needs to be something different. It needs to have become a little bit more focused on the emotional story, the arcs of the characters. Yeah. Again, I don't need a change your mind esque big battle. I don't need that. That's I'm perfectly happy for these stories to stay small in scale but i do need the characters to start plumbing their depths a little bit but right now i didn't need that at all i need exactly this and it's wonderful everything about this is great um the idea that we finally that mr smiley is finally not working on every ride and stand in funland because they'd done that joke before you know that joke of uh, they go to the yeah, they, they go to great. they go to they go to one of the rides and mr smiley's running it they go to one of the stands and he's running it and they're like are you doing all this? He's like, I don't sleep. You know, they've done like they've done that kind of joke in the past, where, where like you... clearly he runs it all and it's like super stressful for him. So the idea that he's got all the uh, the various quartzes and agates like working there now is just so it's such a neat premise. Um, Did you have this weird moment of oh, Andy's knocking around, is he? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so Nephrite, obviously being a pilot. Which, by the way, really bummed out that we haven't had a moment of Stephen and Nephrite hanging out um, so far. Um, yeah. There's been some opportunity. Obviously, they had a really close relationship when she, through the centipede thing. They had a, you know, she she represents all of these gems. Yes, absolutely. Nef, Nephrite always represented the gems lost to that war and that corruption that he wanted to save. She was the focus, and it's not that Stephen didn't want to save the others. 
but she was the was the figurehead of that premise of that idea. The fact she's not said a bloody word since this show started is really upsetting, and I hope I hope there's an yeah. Efrite episode somewhere buried in here. Um, I, I really do. I, I need that. That's a thing the show needs to do. Doesn't need to have done it yet. I guess it would have been nice to have had some sort of acknowledgement that they've got a they've got a relationship. But as long as they get to it, I'll be okay with that. But yeah. they can't not. If they don't, I'll be. Ve- I will be. That will be a big criticism for me. I could see them not, but yep, yeah, carry on. <laughs> yeah, I could I could totally see it too. She seems to have been lumped yeah. in with all just the, you know, quote unquote uncorrupted gems, but uh, yeah. yeah, I I won't be happy with that. She she needs to have a moment, um an episode, uh, something with Steven to show that that you know, their relationship still means something to both of them and that they're still like spending a lot of time and that she's not just like oh cool you're one of those gems that we now have knocking about like i, I want him to have a, a bond with her like he has with some of the yeah. other major gems that we we know and love in the show um and also i'd like to get to know her as a viewer yeah I, like forget absolutely. steven's relationship with her she was so important to the early stages of the show what she like as a person now she's here but anyway forgetting that um nephrite uh, obviously being a pilot is obviously flying the plane and andy's in it looking terrified he's looking terrified even when she's flying it and she's really good at flying it <laughs> um she's like doing loop de loops and stuff trying to draw steven's face in the sky which is a great gag because she's a perfectionist she's like crossed it out like eight times <laughs> it's very funny um but yeah do, so what, what, do you think that's just like They've slowly built a relationship with Andy over the years. And now he lives closer, or he's visiting, or well, maybe. What, I, what do you think it is? I don't. I, I, yeah, I thought about that. I mean, I prefer to think of it as that he's just he in in between the now and then. Or yeah, he's he's come back. So he's just like back. like permanently, um, like he, definitely... he, like he lives in the area now. Because I don't think he did, didn't he? By the yeah. end of the previous thing. No, I thought. Well, I thought he'd like actively left, but I might be wrong. Um. Hmm. Yeah, it just felt a bit like, oh, and, okay, like. But I hope he's not just used for that one moment. He's there. He's he's then in other towny scenes going forward. Yes. Yeah. Um. I thought the interpretation of what the gems did to Earth Jobs was really, really clever. <laughs> like, and it happened from the second the rubies came in. And I knew, like immediately knew. I, I mean, I think they. To be fair, they said Madam Mayor. But even if you didn't, even if I didn't hear that, I immediately knew who they were guarding and why. And I was like, "Oh, that's brilliant." Yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, Snowflake Obsidian, uh, voiced by Ian Jones Courty, just in the in the cockpit of that plane. I don't snow about this. What? God, yeah, just, that was amazing. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> like whoever wrote this episode, like whoever whoever boarded this episode and wrote these jokes is a genius. That's such a good gag. <laughs> He's so snow based that even his puns are related to snow. <laughs> Who is he, Mister Freeze? <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah, and I and I will say as well for you know all these gems being so good at these jobs. If Bix bite is is it cutting perfection? I saw uneven pepperoni distribution on that on that pizza. I saw pepperoni slices cutting. That's hard. not her fault though. She's she's only she's cutting. She that's that's the fault of whoever laid out the toppings. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There were. I did. I did think. I did genuinely think there wasn't enough pepperoni on the pizza. <laughs> yeah. If I if someone gave me that as a as a pepperoni pizza, I think I'd be disappointed. Yeah, you want a little bit. You want a little bit more than that. Yeah, I think so. I kind of like it when the pepperoni's cut in half, though, as well. Do you? Oh no, I got it. Wanna... Yeah, spreading out, spreading out the pepperoni love across slices. Uh, no, 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 no. Because then I you wouldn't you, like it because every it, ne- cause it never gets cut, cut properly. And when you separate the slices, it all want, the, the 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 bit of pepperoni always ends up on the other side anyway. Like you know, you separate them. It's never properly cut, so like it just tags onto the other slice, hanging off by a thread. Yeah, I see what you're saying upsetting or it pulls out from under the cheese and it brings all the cheese with it and then you've suddenly got a cheeseless slice of pizza yeah i mean that's the well in that scenario you redistribute don't you well you manually yeah you manually redistribute i don't want to be manually redistributing yeah. on, putting on my pizza though this is sort it out when you're making it guys come on this is the this is yeah. the bo burnham burrito prop conundrum all over again 
You know, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't have got half the shit I got in my burrito if I knew it wouldn't wrap itself up. You're a burrito expert. You should have told well, me I'd come gone full too circle far. And we've suggested that actually the pepperoni distribution on this particular pizza was right because any more would have caused issues that like the ones we're describing. <sighs> Maybe you're right, Chris. Maybe you're right. This is the, it feels like maybe this is what people is this is what people come to this episode. No, no, this is what people come to this podcast for, Chris. This kind of analysis. Um, <laughs> let's uh, can we talk about Larimar then? Just yeah. the joy of Larimar, like yeah, brilliant. Uh, human screams are my favorite of Earth's delights. I want to hear human screams forever. And then Stephen replies, "Okay, that's kind of troubling." And she's like, "One day I'll make you scream, see Stephen." <laughs> Can I make this clear? Larimar is now my favourite of the new gems. <laughs> By far. And I hope I hope one day she does make see- Steven scream. I hope it's played off as a joke and not serious. But yeah, that would uh, that would excite me. It's so good. It's so good. I have got... Uh, by the way, I have got a bigger point coming up, the characters thing coming up later. I just wanted to get through some of the sillier fun stuff before we got to that. Because mm-hmm. um, I've got a, we've got a thing related to Steven that we want to talk about. Um... Did you? What did you think of the episode pretending to end? Um, yeah, that, that I quite liked that. I thought it was quite funny. Um, yeah, I didn't particularly jar with me or anything. Um, I thought it was quite a good gag because you know it's not ending. Like you know, eleven yeah. minutes haven't gone by. Yeah, exactly. One. It's early enough um, in the episode that so... you wouldn't be mistake. You wouldn't. You couldn't mistake it for a real ending. No. So I think that was fine. Yeah, I thought I thought it was great. I thought it was a genius choice. Like, the idea that, like, in Stephen's head, he solved the problem. Story over. You know, the star, and then the pizza hits him in the face, and then fucking chaos. <laughs> like, yeah. I, know, it's, I said this to Nadia when we, while we were watching it. I said, like, this could not have gone any worse, any quicker. Like, if it had tried, like, <laughs> like. It went from naught to sixty on the chaos meter very quickly. Like it yeah. went from like, oh, this seems to be working surprisingly well, to the balloons go up, they hit the plane, the planes crashing, the roller coasters yeah, off. It was, it was never. <laughs> Excuse me. It was never working that well. Like even those, like I can't remember the name of her, but. Whatever gem was cutting the pizza, she didn't cut it as neatly as the first gem. And like, oh no, sorry, nobody okay, seemed yeah, yeah. nobody seemed that enthusiastic about their new roles. Yo, yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah, but I, it, it hadn't gone chaotic. Like it was, it was, you know, because I, I was expecting nothing was chaos. exploding. No, <laughs> correct, yeah. So, but that was what I was expecting immediately when the plot sort of made itself evident. But the fact that for a bit mm. it wasn't chaotic. Was like I was like I was kind of I was like that's surprising. Um, who, yeah. Who does he get to uh, cut the pizza when he changes everyone's jobs? Uh, looks like z- who is that? That's Zebra. Zebra Jasper is that what that one's called? Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, Zebra Jasper. Cool. Cool. And maybe Blue Lace Agate. Yeah, I think those are the two he gives the pizza cutter to. There nice. you go. Um, Fair play. What did you think to the uh, to the to, to the ruby running around, just like leaving flowers at people and taking their money? Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> very amusing. And like the get-up that she was in and stuff was yeah, particularly amusing with, the, as with well, a bonnet. Who doesn't love a pretty, yeah, a pretty floral bonnet? <laughs> Just looked so unhappy about it. Yeah, I just, I just found it all very entertaining. Yeah, it's great. Um, so let's. Uh, well, actually, one other little detail I can't not go is when Stephen finally realizes what he's done and he goes to Amethyst for help. There's the subtle thing is that the, she's she's having a snow cone that's just liquid. She's drinking her yeah. snow cone. Um, and what I loved about that was when she acknowledged, not acknowledged it, but was when she said something like, "I'm just chilling, eating snow cones." Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like you're not. Yeah, Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I love about that is, like, it's such a great moment because it's not out, it's not outrightly observed, 
But yeah. by drinking yes. a snow cone, yeah. which is the thing you shouldn't be doing, a snow cone should be a snow cone, <laughs> you know, that she is subtly being like, oh, this is working out great, Stephen. You know, <laughs> you know look yeah. at me with my snow cone. Look how snow cony it is. I can drink it. Like, it's <laughs> such... subtle sass, isn't it? Yeah, it's so clever. Because again, I think a lesser show would have like made a, like, made a point of that. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's not worried if people don't get it, which is great. Yes, um, uh, I love it when shows like that. I maintain that is the sole reason that The Wire, not the sole reason, sorry, that's unfair, but that's a big part for The Wire's success because The Wire just didn't give a fuck if you didn't understand. You just had to eventually get it, which made people that did get it feel so special about themselves (laughs) that they talked about the show and praised the show and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there is a truth to that. I mean, it's not, this is only a microcosm of that. Obviously, it's a very tiny moment, but like, it yeah. was nice. It was nice that it was just like subtle and not because, I mean, even this episode of this show, like, there were a lot of really great, but admittedly on the nose jokes. Mm. To have some subtler ones like that built into it were, 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 was a, was a, was a nice. There's a point I think where Stephen even says it. He's like, "It's a bit on the nose, isn't it?" And I was like, "What the episode?" <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah team. he says that about the the gems when they first get their jobs the jobs she yeah. assi- the, the jobs they choose themselves through their conversations with yeah. amethyst um so let's talk about the 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 the, 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 the what you know where this changes so the turning point is steven goes to amethyst and says like you know you know and she you know is like this isn't working out she's like yeah of course you told everyone what they can or can't do um and so even though he had good intentions he then has to admit that this has gone terribly wrong and he says can you help me on help all the people I helped? <laughs> Which is just one of my favorite lines from the episode. Again, it's just full of comedy. They end up uh, fusing. Love Smoky Quartz new design. The jacket around the waist, the black shirt, brilliant. Um, there's a couple of like initial action sequences. But then there's the real threat of the episode, which is the roller coaster is about to crash and everyone on it is going to be hurt. You know, and they are, you know, residents of Beach City, townies. But she can't get there on time. So mm. the, she, she's running. By the way, Natasha Leone is nailing it here, as always, a smoky quartz. Mm. Every, yeah, nine times out of ten, quartz. half, like, I'd say like 80 to 90% of my excitement for smoky quartz is always just hearing the Natasha Leone voice her, um, to be honest mm. with you. Um, but the. They uh, they get flash powers basically. <laughs> they get, they get they become a speedster, um, which I really thought was clever because like I like the idea that some of these pink powers aren't the obvious strength ones we've already seen. I like that this pink Stevens powers are manifesting in lots of different ways, and I thought it was clever that this one was about speed, and I also liked the idea that the powers come through even while fused. I think that's a clever idea. Um, and it mm. lets Amethyst know that something else is going on as well. But again, in this episode, it's not framed as a problem. We can see hints that it's going to potentially be problematic later down the line. But like in the first episode here, it's a power Stephen goes, hey, I've got a new power I have, you know. Cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel like St- I feel like St- well, I feel like we've not really seen Stephen reacting much to it at all. Yeah, well, he's reacted to it in as much as he's acknowledged he has a new power. But I yeah, guess... but he's not... You, yeah. Uh, well, I guess when you think about it, he's been gaining new powers since he was a kid. It's one by one. Yeah, but when... And I guess it's maybe a reflection on him being older now, but whenever he got them as a kid, it was like a moment when he discovered a new power. Yeah, but if you if you get a new power every couple of weeks, you'd, be, you'd sort of just at a certain point go, cool, okay. That's, that's what happens then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they use the uh, they use this this the speed. The, the way it's depicted in the episode is not with like the blue streak or uh, you know or a sorry a sort of a grey purpley streak. It's depicted in that everything around them slows down to show us how fast they're going, and uh, it's just a great moment when the the birds stop in the air. And uh, while Smoky Quartz is saving all the all the people, she takes a selfie. She takes out someone's phone and takes a selfie with them, and then puts it back in their pockets. <laughs> it is like you say; it is amazing that it was because even that kind of style of humor has been done by the Flash, um, the TV show, not the films. There's hardly any uh, humor in those films. Um, and I actually, to be fair, the Barry Allen scene when he meets Bruce Wayne in, in Justice League is very good. Um, 
I, but I love how even though it's got similar tones and similar stuff in terms of the humour, it still, as you said, didn't feel like a flash ripoff. That's quite clever to achieve. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent agreed. Um, um, and again, I know, and also capped by another amazing joke, which is when they un unslow down and the roller coaster flies off and Smokey Quartz goes, "Well, sometimes you save all the people, but can't save the roller coaster." And that's okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the, I wrote that one down. It's sometimes you save all the people, but the roller coaster still crashes into the ocean. Yeah. And that's okay. What a great line that is. Um, yeah, so I, so, I mean, the other thing I noted here is when, he, when, they, go, when they go pink, again, they still felt in control. Mm. It's not quite hulkish. Oh, actually, sorry. One of the line I wrote down that we haven't got to do. Larimar, when the roller coaster goes wrong Larimar yells these are not the screams I wish for <laughs> just yeah the best um, sorry and sorry. I'm glad they went down that route because they could have gone down the route of her going nuts with the power and yes just and being sadistic and, or yeah and, yeah I, yeah, yeah. And I, and that's what went wrong I like there's a line with Larimar yeah. um so yeah what do you think about like the, the pink powers were helpful here very helpful and Stephen was a certain amount in control of them I guess do you think that's why he's not yet worried about these powers yeah, maybe, and he, it's really difficult to judge, because they really played it as, like, whilst they had the whole kind of almost split screen and Smokey Quartz talking to herself, and you had Stephen, or what you assume was Stephen, go, hold on, because he knows about, like, the pink powers, I do enjoy that they played it as Smokey Quartz got the powers. Um, yes. I, uh, yeah, I think... It's going to be very... And I guess, you know, we're taking a lot from the trailer and it certainly looks l l later on that Stephen is is out of control of it. But at the moment, well, yeah, he's certainly not worried. But again, that could be a cocky arrogance thing, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I don't mean that... Like, just, that's not a bad thing. That's part of the... You know, it's a character arc. And the, yeah, and the description of the show says describes them as being out of control so like oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, so we know that it's definitely going that way where, uh, you know if you've read the if you've read the synopsis um do you think as well like the oh, I don't, uh, my brain just died on me that was weird you know you have you have a thought you start saying it but before you've even got the first few words out the thought is just gone that's yeah. upsetting when that happens me not like you yeah. oh um I can't remember. But I, I I also thought as well. Nothing people are referring to it as Avatar State. It's very reminiscent. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a good. It's way very re yeah, reminiscent yeah. of when Ang goes into the Avatar State. Um, he's in a bit more control than Ang is, but I think if he does lose control later on, it's going to feel very reminiscent of the Avatar State. Um, it's definitely yeah. going to turn sour at some point. Either way, I think. Um, so let's talk about the big yeah, character. I agree with that character moment then. Which for me, this is the thing that mm. I took most from this episode. And I want to get your opinion on this. So Amethyst's... This is so clever because it's tied so strongly into the, the episode itself. Amethyst is talking about being good at helping people find out what they want to do. Mm -hmm. What they want to do with themselves, you know. And then she turns around and asks the big question. What is it mm. that Stephen wants to do? And I think that's what's been interesting about at least these two episodes. I'm not going to say anything about the subsequent two because um, obviously you haven't seen them yet, but I think it's, there was an element of Stephen, like, n seeming, not admitting, but seeming lost. You look at that opening scene of episode one, not the opening opening scene, but the scene where he's with uh, Amethyst on the bench, the scene that leads him to Jasper, and she's like, ah, leave, she's not your problem. But he goes anyway. And a part of me wondered, did he go anyway? Because it's like, oh, helping people is all I've got. Yeah, I think so. I think you might be right. And what does a so what you ask the question, what does a soldier do when a war ends? What does the person who helps everyone ha do when the conflict's over and they don't need help anymore? Yeah, wouldn't that be great if they start to build parallels between Stephen and Jasper and their situations? Sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I and I and, amazing. And they certainly have laid a few bricks of that you know, of that structure in these two episodes, uh, they could if they wanted to explore and, it, they definitely could. And I loved that Stephen got really cagey. Like when Amethyst asked, he didn't have an answer. 
he didn't and i think that is really important because it's it's absolutely the case it's he, he, you know he he's he's going to be a little lost now his whole life mm. was about saving everyone well they're saved now and you can help them in small ways but you can no longer help them in those big sweeping ways you used to is that does this tie into that idea we were talking about earlier of like uh, in sorry in episode 1 uh st- where you know What's he going to do now he saved the ga- like save the world, save the galaxy, save the universe, whatever? Yeah, what, 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 what's left for him to achieve? Is that, gonna, is that emptiness going to consume him, maybe? Um, is he going really, it... to keep finding stuff to fix even when it doesn't need to be fixed? Is that part of the, 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 the plot here? If it is a limited series, it's also a really clever plot because it's one that, you know you can resolve in 10 episodes you can resolve in 20 like mm-hmm. you don't need to it doesn't need to sprawl like i love the notion that the the carry through plot is not a mythology plot it's a character plot yeah exactly and that's that's kind of what i talked about at the beginning of this episode which is one of the things that's so good about it is we we are still laying groundwork for a big character plot so i know that's where it's mm. going and that's one of the reasons this episode is so perfect is it perfect it it does nudge me and go hey just so you know it's not just this there's more going on here but we're having some fun with it right now we're in the early episodes let's play with the world a little bit have our fun and then we might get to some more serious sort of character stuff a little bit later like that's kind of what this episode is sort of communicated to me um, whether intentional or not i don't know but like it, it, you know it's such a fun episode it's a it really yeah. is a joyous 10 minutes uh, like we spent half of this episode just describing some of our favorite jokes because there are so many and they're so good and it's such a blast to watch this episode I, honestly i was r- roariously laughing through most of this mm. when i sat down to watch it and did you watch it live by the way i watched yeah i watched i watched all four live yeah. um joined it with some of the conversation on the discord then got some a little bit of sleep before i before I uh, got up early to watch them again for this, um, I wanted to, I wanted to check them twice, and I made notes second time. I just let watch them for myself and for fun. The first time I made a conscious effort not to be thinking about the podcast while I watched them the first time, just to enjoy them, yeah, go with the flow. Because I feel like when I sat down to watch the movie, I was very focused in on movie review. What am I going to say about this movie? What What's my thoughts? What are my feelings? Um, whereas this time I was like, no, and just for those that for those that missed that, he he hated it. <laughs> You're the worst. I didn't. Really? The, the, it, 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 oh, it's all recap. <sighs> for those who've also missed it, Chris has found this to be a good running joke that he that he tells listeners that I hated the movie when I did not. Anyway, right. So um, back to this. So yeah. So I just I I had a blast watching this. I had so much fun just sitting down and watching this the first time. Um, but what I got, I think what what it communicated to me, other than that, was that not to worry. We're also getting to some more interesting character stuff at a later point too, and this yeah, I th- I, what's definitely. left for him is really interesting. But to were me. you were you worried that we wouldn't? Um, I feel like I could have been if they if the if all four of these episodes had been utterly devoid of any connective tissue or mm. hints of character stuff. Yeah, I think that could have. But that, they but they, that, but, I... they, but they but they but they prevented that from being a slight concern at all by by making sure that each episode contained at least some overall character stuff well give me give me give me a little bit of let's do uh let's do a little bit of hinting a little bit of teasing um for me uh do do they do have they justified all four of these airing together or is it just a big launch Mm, marketing i think i think they yes and no I, I I don't think they needed to air together because I, I, I don't think they're particularly connected. I don't think they mm. form a little arc. I think they're just part of the overall arc of the show. So any connective tissue between them is connective tissue that's going to exist between all 10 episodes that we're about to see. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't think these particular four are any more or less connected than the subsequent six. But... The re- I do think they did the right thing because episode four is certainly the one that gives us the biggest, clearest sign that this is going somewhere a bit deeper and a bit uh, and a bit l- what's the word um, with it- not scale as in mythology scale, but character scale and like. 
it, it's going somewhere for these characters, and that there's an int- there's a really interesting story they're building to here, um, and a okay, and a cool. really and a really good, some really good character ideas, uh, and some really emotional places the show is likely to go, and some really interesting characters. So I I think episode four is the one that does that the clearest. So making sure that on the first night you see up to episode four works in its favor. Whether that was by design or not, I doubt it. Um, I'm sure the writers of the show, the, you know, the creative team behind the show, were glad when they heard that it was going to be four episodes at once because they probably thought the fourth episode was probably a really good place to sort of stop the first night and say, look, here's our mission statement. This This is... All but across these four episodes, we've established what Steven Universe future is going to be, and I think, mm. and I, I think it's sort of we we have the spectrum across these four episodes. Um, you know, I think the first episode actually that's a really interesting. I, that's a really interesting, I, I didn't even think so. The first episode is kind of like, hey, this show is going to be somewhat an epilogue to Steven Universe. We're going to mm. see where all the characters are up to. Episode two is this show is going to be a bunch of fun and silly in places. Episode three is this show is going to be tying up random plot plots that you didn't think we'd necessarily get to. Um, oh, that's exciting! Um, and and four is and we're also doing the emotional stuff. Okay, cool. Emotional and character stuff, I should say. So in a weird way, I think it's worked out brilliantly that these four are all add because they <laughs> show the four sides to the the shape that is Stephen Universe future. Um, mm. And I and I think that's actually surprisingly uh, yeah i don't i don't think by design though i i I, i'm glad it worked out that way but i i I, there's no way the left arm and the right arm are talking here there's no way that they passed that on to cartoon network and cartoon network (laughs) were like we'll take that into consideration maybe we'll have the first four together no cartoon network were like it'll be easier to promote if we do it like a big opening night four episodes that's all that happened but but I'm glad, very relieved, because uh, I I don't think I actually know. Uh, to be fair, if if just two had aired and we were, this is all we'd seen in that first night, I'd still be quite excited about this show. Uh, it's you know I, I'd still be enjoying this show. They're, they're such fun episodes. Yeah, I think I I think it was certainly right to air more than the first. Yes. Um, oh yes. If it had just yeah. been the first, I'd be like, uh, we'll see. Like I'd be. It's not bad. It's not. It's 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 good. It's it's really good. But is it top tier? No. Like hopefully the show isn't going to be around this sort of like down the middle level the whole time. Um, and then two and yeah. uh, two and pati- particularly I think four. I think three is really good too. But three is three is odd. I I'm really I cannot wait to talk to you about episode three, but only because it's been I, from what I've get from the brief uh, sticking my head into the Discord and some of the other chats. It's been the episode that's moved around in people's sort of rankings of the four the most. Like some people oh, okay. have it as number one, some people have it as number four. <laughs> like some yeah, people thought it was the best episode of the four, and a lot of people thought it was the worst. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. like I, uh, I cannot wait to hear what you think about that, Chris. I'm very excited. So that's a little tease for you. Okay. Do you feel teased? Okay, cool. I feel very teased. I feel suitably teased, Dan. Mm, good. Good. I'm excited. I'm I'm really pumped for the rest of these episodes now. Really pumped. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so so excited, and I'm so excited to get on and like watch the next two and stuff. And yeah, and I assume you're go- I assume you're pretty much going to watch those immediately. Uh, yeah. Well, I got something to do this morning, but yeah, I pro- I don't think I'll wait until tomorrow when we're recording. Yeah, I would have thought I'd watch them today. Awesome. Are you going to watch them today and then watch them again before tomorrow's podcast? Or are you? J- yeah, if I do watch them today, I'll yeah, I'll do that as, as you did. I I like to um I like to not I like to have just seen them in some form. I don't like to be reviewing something I saw the day before. So yeah, that's true. You yeah, because you you you'll often choose to get up early and watch it before a podcast rather than watch it the day before and then get up to record. Yeah, yeah and that's been the case even with the uh, rewind reviews. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Like so, like so for for me, like it was weird because like. I, I sent you the link yesterday and I was like, you can watch them live. And you were just like, yeah, I'll wait in the morning. I'll wait in the morning. And part of me went, it's because he prefers to watch them just before we record. Yeah, partly that. And partly I didn't, in my head, getting up earlier was less damaging than to sleep than staying up later. Why not try why, why not try both, Chris? Why not go to bed at like half three, four in the morning and then have your alarm go off at half seven so you can watch them again? 
but you're you're a madman. That's uh, <laughs> I imagine it would have been handy to know in advance I was only going to watch the first two, uh, <laughs> so you didn't have to do that with the second two, which I apologise for. Well, no, I, I I wanted to. I was like, yeah. I uh, but ironically though, I didn't. I it was the last night of the play yesterday, so I um I didn't actually. I was I was awake at one and did think, hmm, shall I? And then I was like, no, I don't want to knacker myself by staying up for an hour, and I don't want to fall asleep during them and all of that sort of stuff. Oh, so, mate, yeah. like, Nadia was like, when we started, it was actually a sign of the quality of these. When we started, so when we sat down, by, so uh, Nadia had been out that night, and she got home like t- before, just for twelve, mm-hmm. and she was like, oh, we're gonna have to stay up until one to watch these. Uh, so we started watching Bob's Burgers, and she was dozing through Bob's Burgers. So between twelve and one, yeah, um, and then I. Uh, when we switched over to Steven Universe, I was really worried she was going to fall asleep. But by the middle of the first episode, or maybe towards the start of the second, she was sat up, like, you know, engaged watching. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really a sign of this show. Because she, she sleeps through... Yeah, absolutely. She'll sleep through, she'll sleep through fucking anything. <laughs> like, she's... <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's incredible the things she's fallen asleep during. Um, so, yeah. So, Dinner. Uh, a mate, run it's mate, just uh, madness uh, yeah it's ridiculous Dri- she's dri- driving a car she fell asleep no I'm kidding <laughs> that would be narcolepsy <laughs> that is a genuine and very serious condition no no she's mm-hmm. but she she, did, she. I was very surprised that it, it caught her attention that way because she seemed very very tired um, and, that, and, and I, that, I, um, I, I was so su- I was so surprised when my alarm went off at half seven this morning because I had obviously not been asleep for very long that I actually yelled out ah! <laughs> as I turned it off because I, I was confused and panicked as to what was happening. Why? I think I, I historically, uh, like, this doesn't sound so stupid, but historically, um, like, when I was younger, we always did housework on a Saturday, and, like, there would always be... Um, Saturdays, I think, usually, in, in the UK at least, Saturday is a day where there's more going on than a Sunday. So like whenever I have to get up early on a Sunday, my I find it really hard. Like my body is like it feels like my body is going, Hold on a minute, mate. This is meant to be the day that, that we can sleep a bit. What are you what are you doing? Like Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I understand because yeah, it's just, it, it's the same thing when I was younger. Like I was always had to get up to do something on a Saturday, whereas on a Sunday there was very yeah. little to do. Um yeah. because we we were not a church going family. <laughs> um so no. No, yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my grandparents were—they well, were very disappointed that when we when we lived in Ireland, they made us go to church on Sundays. But then when we came back to England, we were like, nah, it's done with that. <laughs> Collectively as a family, you just all sat around, had a little chat about it, and you were like, yeah. I don't think we had to have a chat about it. There was just like an exchange of glances, and we all knew we we'd escaped. Because in Ireland, if you don't go to church, or back in the t- back in the nineties, middle of the nineties, you weren't part of the community. Like you, people would talk about you, like. That's that family that don't show up to the one church in the you know in this right. small town every Sunday. So yeah, you're you're like, that's of... that that's that Dan Doolan kid. Apparently apparently he's watching Robocop. But he's yeah. like what five? Yeah, I know. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Almost, you, he's pretending he's it. sick so he doesn't and... have to go to church so he can stay at home and watch Robocop. <laughs> well no, I had to go to church. Like, I heard he's in I heard he's into quick change. What's what the fuck's quick change? That Bill Murray <laughs> movie? Never heard of it. <laughs> Uh, rewind reviews if you want to understand any of those jokes uh, also available on our YouTube channel um, yeah we should say that actually yeah if we, we've in the gap between for those of you who just dip into this channel when we do Steven Universe mainline content you know we actually review full episodes um, you may not be aware that rather than doing hiatus watch in the last hiatus we did and started a new podcast for our for our uh, for our sins for the stupidest thing we ever did i'm loving doing it but dear lord we're idiots like why do we keep starting podcasts next time i try to start a podcast chris just slap me with a newspaper roll up newspaper and be like no bad dan bad dan i've tried oh it should be it should be easy because we just do we, we won't commit ourselves we won't we won't commit ourselves it doesn't matter i mean we've, we've ended up committing ourselves and then some um <laughs> and it's like yeah but we've got we've got to watch a movie dude <laughs> Ah, that'd be funny. It seemed like to such a fair. good idea. 
To be fair, perfect, as we've said many and many a time, perfect storm of things with how it ended up yeah, being podcast nuts. Yeah. Um, but for those who don't know, Rewind Reviews, we go back and we review an old movie from our either childhood or um, or our teen years, I guess. So just any movie that how we have like a nostalgia for. Um, and and yes, I did review, we, I did choose and have us review Robocop, which is a movie I watched far too young. Um, and we did a review, Quick Change, a movie I saw by accident in my youth um, because I'd recorded something else and a quick change of dead after it. And my vid- my VCR had continued recording. So I ended up just watching this movie quick change and discovering it um, and find out if Chris enjoyed it also um, by going over and listening to that. It's on iTunes mm. and Google play and all those. It's also on this YouTube channel with most recent reviews. We've done Jumanji. We've done toy story. Um, we've done a bunch. We've done a bunch. 10 things I hate about you is one of them. That's a, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, check that out. I recommend people um, check it listen. out. We've had a blast recording it, which usually means it's good. Like, I've noticed yeah, the, yeah, the trend right. tends to be if we had a lot of fun recording it, the feedback on the on the, on the the podcasting question is usually very positive. So mm. I am going to go on the basis of that historical evidence that the amount of fun I'm having recording those suggests that the quality is there. The viewers aren't. Mm. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> but the, I, in that case, I, I apologize in advance for, for this episode because I've not enjoyed this at all. Um. <laughs> I've had a I've had a great time. Yeah, at least one of us has. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I've had a I've had a good time. <laughs> yeah, always having a good time. So there you go. So that's everything yeah. for this episode. Um, <laughs> I think I'm, that... make it very clear. I am joking. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. And we've not gone down the weird tangents we went down to the last not the oh, not the last one but the before that. <laughs> Did we go on weird tangents? Dan was... What was that about? Go- yeah, you were googling bedtimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's true anyway that's Dan's actually recorded this from prison <laughs> yeah 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 they, it's nice that they allow me to bring my mic into prison don't you think <laughs> yeah yeah even nicer that they allowed you to stay up till 1am and watch steven universe with nadia <laughs> yeah that, that well that was it was it, it was a conjugal visit i could either we i could either i could either uh, get laid or watch steven universe <laughs> Yeah, those are yeah. my choices. Um, I, I made the right choice. I'm confident. <laughs> oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, inappropriate jokes aside, again, once again, we are thoroughly earning our not suitable for kids tag on YouTube, yep. which uh, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot every time we do it because it just means it just literally means that we don't appear in searches <laughs> and we don't appear on the kids version of YouTube app. Sorry, guys. Um, we <laughs> well, sorry to us. We're sorry to ourselves. You, we don't need to apologise to you listeners. Anyway, <laughs> now I'm literally rambling. Thanks for listening. I've been Dan Doolin. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll speak to you next time as we discuss Rose's Butts. Oh, I'm, I'm recording still. So let me just chat. I'm gonna. Chris is not recording, but I'm gonna clarify if it's rosebuds or rose, whatever it is, rosebuds, not roses buds. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is seamlessly edit it in. That's been everything for this. Blah blah blah, and we'll speak to you next time when we review rosebuds. So I'll edit that in. It'll be seamless, Chris. Don't worry about it. <laughs>